Hello everyone, my name is Satyam Shwaj and I am working as a legal intern with Lexus & Company and in this video, we will discuss about PIL that is Public Interest Litigation. A Public Interest Litigation, also known as PIL, is a litigation that is filed to safeguard or enforce public interest. Public interest is the interest belonging to a particular class or community affecting their legal right or liabilities. PIL has PIL has not been defined in India statute. However, courts have interpreted and defined PIL. Supreme Court, in case of Janta Dal vs. H. S. Chaudhary, held that luxury and expression PIL means a legal action started in a court of law for enforcement of public or general interest, where the public or particular classes of public some interest that affect their legal rights or liabilities. PILs are considered to be the most effective as well as the most commonly used judicial tool to safeguard the environment due to their many advances, including but not limited to speedy result, nominal court fees, relaxed procedure rules, and a wide variety of in investigation techniques available to the court like special committees. Now who can file a PIL? Any individual or organization can file a PIL either by his or her own standing or that is to protect to enforce a right owned to him or them or by the government or on the behalf of a section of society who is disadvantaged or oppressed and is not able to enforce any their legal right. And the concept of local standi has been relaxed in the case of PIL so as to enable the underworld court to look into the grievance that are filed on the behalf of the, those who are poor, illiterate, deprived or disabled and are unable to approach the court themselves. However, only a person acting in good faith and who has sufficient interest in the proceeding will have a local standi to file a PIL. A person who approached the Honorable Court for personal gain, private profit or political or any oblique consideration will not be entitled, entertained. Uh, Honorable Court sometimes itself takes sumoto cognizance in PIL matters. Now where can a PIL be filed? PIL are extension of red petitions, therefore PIL may be filed either before the Honorable Supreme Court under Article 32 or before the Honorable High Courts under Section 226. Now let's see the law which are governing PIL in India. Over the years the court in India have formulated various principles in respect to the PIL. First being the relaxed rule of locus standi. A PIL can be filed by any person who for the welfare of others are and are of the disadvantage and are thus unable to approach the court themselves. The general, law, the general rule of locus standi have been relaxed in these cases to protect and safeguard the interest and the right of these disadvantaged people. Then the next is relaxed procedural rules. Court have treated even a letter or the telegram as a PIL in the case of rural litigation and entitlement. Kendra Dehradun vs. State of Uttar Pradesh. Even the law relating to pleading has been relaxed in the court in the cases of PIL. Now the next is intervention by the court. Court has also highlighted the fact that Article 14 and 21 of the Constitution and the International Convention of Human Rights provide for a fair and reasonable trial. Thus the court must intervene when the injustice is too many. Then the next is question of the maintainability. The government may not allow to raise a question as to the maintainability of the PIL if the court is prima facie satisfied that there is a variation of any constitutional right or the disadvantaged category of people. And the next is principle of res judicata. The principle of res judicata or any other principle analogs to it would depend on the circumstances and the fact of the cases and the nature of the PIL. Now the next is appointment of a commission. In special circumstances, a court may appoint a commission or other bodies to investigate. In the event that the commission take over a public institution, the court may direct management of it. Now let's see the PIL regarding constitutionality or validity of a statute or a statutory rule. Ordinarily, the High Court should not entertain such a petition by the way of PIL, where there is complete justice under Injustice under Article 142 of the Indian Constitution, Honorable Supreme Court of India has discretionary power 
to pass a decree or order as may be necessary to do complete justice. However, while high courts may pass order to complete to do complete justice, they do not have powers akin to the granted of the Honorable Supreme Court under Article 142. Now the misses of PILs. Courts are extremely cautious to ensure that the PIL are not misused, as the misuse of PIL would defect the very purpose for which it is been conceived, and that is to come to the rescue of the poor and the downtrodden. The court have from time to time reiterated this fact in the case of Kusum Lata vs Union of India. However, courts have held that every it is the petitioner that approves the court for his own private due to the personal grievance, the court may treat it as necessary to inquire into the subject of a litigation and it states for the affairs in the furtherance of the public interest. Then the next is formulation of various concepts. In environmental law cases, the courts have formulated and evolved several concepts including the polluter pay principle and the precautionary principle and the principle of trust doctrine and the last is sustainable development. Now what are the essential for drafting a PIL? Starting with the collection of information. The first step of drafting a PIL would be to collect all the relevant data pertaining to the issue, followed by the collection of documents. All documents relating to the case should be including photograph or if any must be collected for the PIL in the court in which it is to be filed must be seen the petitioner must decide in which he or she wants to file a PIL whether before the Supreme Court or before the High Court of the state. Then the next is to form a PIL. A PIL can be in form of a petition or even a letter or postcard. In the event of the PIL to be filed before the Supreme Court, the letter or a postcard must be addressed to the Chief Justice of India. In the event of the PIL is being filed before the High Court, the letter or postcard must be addressed to the Chief Justice of a particular High Court. Now the Public Litigation Guidelines. When drafting a PIL, one must look into the Public Litigation Guidelines applicable for the particular court before which one intends to file a PIL. The same are usually available on the website of the respective courts. Now what are the details to be clearly stated in the PIL? First, we need petitioner's name, his postal address, his email address, his phone number, occupation, his annual income, along with the PAN number. Now the second is proof of identity of the petitioner, third being the fact of the case, fourth being the nature of injury, fifth being any personal interest that he or she or they may have, may have faced, sixth being the detail of the litigation involving the petitioner which could have a legal nexus with the issue involved in the PIL, seventh being the class of people for whose benefit the PIL being filed and how they are incapable of accessing the court. Eight being the event that any representation have been made to any of the authorities relating to the issue and the details of the scene. Ninth being any person, body or institution that may have affected the by the PIL must join as a party. Tenth being the petitioner nay, must also state that he, she or they are able to pay the cost if any that may be imposed by the court and the last is the appearance in the court after all the petition has been drafted and been filed the petitioner may either appoint an advocate or he or she or they can choose to appear in person before the court that is all for today's video thank you for watching please like share and subscribe